Recall the harmonic series, the sum of one and a half and a third and a quarter and so on. This was a series that we saw previously diverged. But in this video, I want to consider a bit of a twist on this harmonic series, a sort of alternating harmonic series. This is now the sum of minus one to the power of n minus one divided by n. And what that minus one thing does is it means that every other sign is negative, it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. Now, while the original harmonic series, the one over n, diverged, there's definitely an open question about this one, because if you think about it, all of those negatives, in a sense, cancel off versus adding to the larger total. So here's how I want to try to visualize what this alternating series does. Imagine I start with the number line here, starts at zero and goes out to say one. Now, if I consider just this first partial sum, I start at the zero and I go out to one. But then when I go to the second partial sum, I also have to subtract off a half. So let me subtract off the half, and this takes me to S2, the second partial sum, which occurs at one minus a half or a half. As in, I took a big step out and then a smaller step back. Okay, well, now I need to step out one third, so I advance to my S3. And then I step backwards to get to my S4, and then I advance to my S5, and backwards with my S6, and advance with my S7, and so on. That is, because of the nature of this alternating series, there's this sort of back and forth process, and it kind of looks like it's going to converge, that the actual value of the series is going to be stuck somewhere here in the middle. Now, if we look at all the even partial sums, the S2, the S4, the S6, the even sums is an increasing sequence. Well, the odd partial sums, the S3, the S5, the S7, that is a decreasing one, it's getting smaller. So the final answer appears to be squished between these two different sides. Let's formalize this idea into a theorem. I'm gonna say that the alternating series test says, if I begin with an alternating series, so a minus one to the n minus one times a bn, some sequence, looks a lot like it did for the harmonic series, where it's going to be decreasing, where it's going to be positive, and where the limit is zero. If all of those conditions are true, then we conclude that the series converges, and that is our alternating series test. Let's see it for the specific example. So for this example, this minus one to the n minus one divided out by n, well, what do we have? It's certainly going to be the case that the bn is positive. So the bn in this example is just one over n. It's positive. It's decreasing as n gets larger, 1 over n gets smaller, and the limit of 1 over n is just 0. So this satisfies all three conditions of the alternating series test, and so we say that it converges. Now, alternating series are really nice, and part of the reason why they're so nice is that they're easy to check. That is, this final condition that the limit of the bn's goes to 0, well, Limits of sequence are relatively easy to compute. They're using a lot of the same sort of calculus one methods that we did for limits at infinity, sort of a highest power on the top divided by highest power on the bottom type of analysis. But I want to contrast this with a different theorem that we've seen, which was the divergence theorem. So how did the divergence theorem work? It said if you take the limit of the sequence, and the limit of the sequence is non-zero, then the sequence diverged. And this makes sense because Suppose your limit of your sequence was, I don't know, 7. Well, then the series would be getting very close to 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, which would diverge. So, indeed, it said you had to have the limit being 0 if you wanted it to converge. But notice that this is not an if and only if. It's not a statement with a converse that goes the other direction. Namely, it only works in the direction if it is non-zero, then it diverges. If the limit was 0... The divergence test doesn't tell you anything at all. So how can I think about the alternating series test? Well, the alternating series test is like partially going the other direction of the divergence test. It says, well, if the limit is zero and you have these other things that needs to be alternating, it needs to have positive terms, it needs to be decreasing, then you get convergence. So if you have the limit being zero, but you don't have any of those other things, there's no guarantee that it converges. If the limit is non-zero, then it does guarantee its divergence by the divergence test. So I think of these two tests as related in that sense. 